Gather veterans, it's time to join the fight. The long war begins. This is The Long War. I'm Rob Bear, and joining me, uh, my partners in crime, Kenny Boucher, Wyatt Turk, and special guest, Demeki. Yo, dog. Great to be here. Yo, what's up? Hey, how y'all doing? Uh, Demeki's from Dice Jack. I don't know if I was supposed to say where he's from. Why got mad at me? Because they used to say he's from Jack Close Painting, so. <laughs> Rob, what are you, Demeki why are you, from why Dice are you jerking off your hand with your hand? <laughs> I and it scratches, it itches. His I don't skin know suit I, is is dried out, and he yeah. needs some moisturizer. It is pretty dry in here because, like, I have the little heater. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> it's like stop jerking out of your hand. Why are you looking? Because it's visible. Why wouldn't I look? Yeah, we're on a video call, Rob. It's kind of what we're doing. I study every part of your body at all times. No, you don't. You know, it what sounds hot. You know I do. I gotta lie. That's right. St- skin suits chafe sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, Rob. Wow. So what's our? Let's get it out at the beginning of the podcast. What's our? What's our event schedule for the next few weeks? So I think next next week we'll have a podcast, but it won't be live. The week after, I don't. I think we're not podcasting. You have, you're traveling. Mm, yeah, I'll be seeing my mom. So we'll be back March 9th? No, 10th. We'll be back March 10th. Like live. All of us uh, scratching yep. our hands. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You'll be able to see Rob doing, like, just picking at J-O his, in my hand. Yeah, J-O in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But next week, there will be a podcast. Mm-hmm. Just going to have to download it on, you know, whatever your RS feed is. Man, you could you could probably download our podcast on a TI eighty five calculator at this point. <laughs> Easily, don't be shocked Pardon. if like you know the text readout is just you know eight zero zero eight five endlessly. Yep. <laughs> it won't delete my Zelda game that's on there, right? <laughs> oh, or snake. That depends on if you upgraded the memory or not. Mm-hmm. Very good on it. So, uh, special guest to Mickey. Dice check. He's going to be playing this weekend in the new town. So we, as Wyatt professionally put it earlier, our subject matter expert here, as we discuss Tau and custodies and all these crazy things that have happened over the last weekend, uh, later in the show. I'm no Richard Siegler, just FYI. I'm no Richard wow. Siegler. Wow. Way well, to set the bar low. I mean, that's <laughs> just a normal bar. I mean, he's no one is Richard Siegler. <laughs> yeah, it turns out there can be only one. Yeah, mm. fucking gangster over here. We got, we're going to talk a little bit about the new preview. Rob has some news for us. Allegedly. Uh, and before we do all that, we'll go into our uh, quick. I mean, like, honestly, this segment has gotten a lot of I got a lot of DMs over the last few. Would you rather's? And I even have one before I kick it over to Wyatt. I need a clarification. This has come up a few times in, in DM. Oh, yeah? Ooh, so okay. clarification on last week's. Yeah. Like kind of mm. first, kind of almost superhero weird uh, one. Um, with the luck power, this came up a couple of times. Mm-hmm. It seems inappropriate that the teleporter can choose not to use it, but the luck guy can't. So if that's going to be the case, clarifications on how the luck works would be uh, is is requested, and even some suggestions that I got from DMs. Uh, which this is the this is the one I like the most is for the for the the guy who is uncannily ridiculously lucky and but also a hundred meter radius of unlucky aura. Is it like and this is the, my favorite one? Is it like whatever I'm doing? It's like a slot machine of luck, right? So let's say I'm playing Diablo, video game slot machine. Yeah, meaning SOJs are dropping. You know what I'm saying? Does that mean every 100 meters around me in the, in that slot is having like the worst video game luck possible? Or does it mean they can literally get rid of a brother lawnmower? Like, for example, no, if I'm driving a car. No, it's, and so it's, I, no, it's, it's luck. So, I mean, it, it all, it all depends, right? That's why it's, it's really sort of a, like an esoteric 
kind of kind of power, right? Because if I'm just sitting in a room doing nothing, then luck really has no bearing on it, right? Um, with maybe an exception being like, maybe you get like an email for winning a sweepstakes or something for simply existing, but you would have to be doing something. You have to be like pursuing something or going right. And so, and so, the, so, the, right? so the clarification is like, so I'm sitting in my room doing nothing and I have a cup of hot coffee. Yeah. And it like, and I, no, and I knock it over and it flips like three times, not a drop spills and lands perfect. Yeah. Does that, does that mean, is, are we like, and what, what people are like asking for is like locked in a hundred meters around me, all the like neighbors and stuff, like anything that w- could be in that category would be the exact worst thing that could happen for like, or is it like, well, maybe not, maybe not like the worst thing that could happen, but it would just be like unlucky. Well, so like, like, like it doesn't, it doesn't scale. For example, I'm driving right. super fast, right? Just being, cause I know I'm super lucky. Nothing matters. And like mm-hmm. by the skin of my teeth, I avoid like the most heinous car accidents is like my luck or making people like be in death traps now. Like, you know, like I'm, I'm burning no. all the luck. No, 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 no. It's, it's, that, that's like, that's part of the whole, that's part of the whole thing is that you, you are exceptionally lucky. So mm-hmm. it's like, if you were going to get groceries, then and you get out of your car. Well, like a few minutes before you got out of your car, somebody got into their car and dropped like a hundred dollar bill on the ground. And then you find that. So you're, you're really lucky. And there are, as, as you're walking into the store, somebody else might like, forget their cup on the top of the car when they get in and then like it spills their drink or something. Right. So it's it's not like, so if your, your analogy of like mowing your lawn. So if somebody was like on his riding mower rowing, like mowing his lawn, unless there is already a bunch of factors in play, there's, there's really no way that he would be unlucky enough for that. It's more like he's going to run over a dog shit and splatter his car. Yeah. 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 That would, that would be like really unlucky, but it's not going to just like spontaneously flip upside down. It's not going to final destination him. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Okay. And one last clarification. What storm level? Because we kind of briefly mentioned like maybe tropical. Oh, storm. like a severe storm. Like is I it was, region was locked? Like if it happens, so if I go to Colorado in the winter, is it gonna be a blizzard or is it like suddenly miraculously like a tropical depression shows? That's up? a good point. I think it would I think it would make more sense based on how weather works that like it would be centralized to the locale. Hmm. Okay. Those are the two clarifications I got in DMs over last week. All right, thank you for the clarifications. Let's kick it over to Wyatt for another award-winning segment. <laughs> Peabody, <laughs> even. I got a uh, I got a user submitted one. Oh boy! Um, which is like I I really like it when people send me these, but like I'll I'll just do like a blanket statement. Um, if you send me would you rather's and they are just like vile and do not conform to like the show or like what we could say on Twitch, I'm obviously not going to use them. So. Right. If you want to submit them, I'm all for it. But don't, don't like, don't waste your time. Don't pick like the most like X rated. Would you rather that you can find? Because I'm obviously not going to use it. All right. So this is from this is from Habanero. He's he's one of your students, I believe, Kenny. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, would you rather become the best miniature painter ever? But despite all efforts, your the faces and heads of your miniatures look like crap like they're just they're awful or would you rather become the most talented 40k player all time you're the best unbeatable but your dice critically fail you in the most like crucial point of a championship game well that doesn't seem like any fun that's a good one because it's like so it's like it's so you're not like the best 40k player of all time because you're not gonna have the accolade to back it, yeah, mm-hmm. right. And you're not the best miniature painter of all time because again, you're not gonna you're gonna have critical examples of like how you're not. It's like everything you do except this is the best. Everything you do except this is the best. So you choke, therefore you're like never winning tournament. You're never winning events, but you win like literally every other fucking game you play. Ninety nine point nine percent win record. You're never beating Richard Sigler. Unless yeah. it's round two of the tournament, mm-hmm. in which case you're unbeatable. But when you get up on stage, it's auto lose. So you go your whole life knowing you're always five and one. You're never six and zero. Oh. Well, because you know, talking about clarifications, mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that you lose. It just means that at the critical moment, your dice fail you, right? 
So you'd have to come back from it using your your skills. Yes. Is it one critical moment cap? The the critical moment of the game. The critical moment. So you oh I, so I think you can navigate around that because you would know it's going to happen. Right? Cause like, you know, it's always whatever the most critical moment is. Like, you're in this situation. Like, the only way I can beat Richard Sega is roll five right now. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to roll five. I know this. I know this in my heart. So then you can actually. <laughs> it's, it's like it's actually guaranteed I'm going to roll one. <laughs> See, that's kind of interesting. So, and there's no way to navigate, though, not being able to paint the faces except not painting models with faces. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But. No characters. Kind of, kind of pigeonholes you a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Probably That's, make a lot of money, though, off of just painting, like, tanks. 10,000 space marines? Yeah. Space marines and no, yeah, space marines and no faces. Tanks, uh, you can paint, like, all the, like, any fantasy night models. Tau? Tau doesn't have faces. Most of the models don't. They just have helmets. Yeah, I think you can actually get away with this uh, best painter in the Maybe world thing. Aldar. Pretty yeah. easily. And Eldar, yeah, with their bowling pin yeah. heads. Yeah. Just yeah. don't play orcs. You're going to run into that one uh, that one painting competition where everybody has to see. I just don't do painting plus. competitions. Yeah. I was going to say. Yeah, but yeah, how like, can people say that you're the best at that point, right? Like, I only yeah. enter into large sci fi model. But even even if you did paint orcs. Yeah, ooh, like, ooh, ooh, and then I'm going to go take over the that. fucking scale scene with all the tanks and shit. Oh, like the IPMS? Like, I'm going to, like, check out my submarine, check out my fucking airplane, check out my fucking tank and shit. You know what I mean? Like, all that dumb shit. Like, the best. <laughs> oh, I'm going to do some gunpla, you fools. You didn't even know about me. I just started yesterday. Check this shit out. Magically infused gangsterness. Now, well, here's the problem, though. How does it work? Can I even explain how I'm doing it anymore, or is just the magic takes over? it? No, it's just, like, it, it's, like, imposter syndrome just overwhelms you and you're you're trying to paint this face and you're just like oh. you know i mean like i'm the best miniature painter in the world except faces so i found mm-hmm. a way to like to paint awesome but can i even teach it though that's the problem no because you can't paint it you're you're dog shit at painting faces. no no can i teach how to paint metal like not faces i'm not, I'm, I'm hiding from the world i can't paint faces oh yeah 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 like am i am i able your, to explain like, my new techniques your, this is your dark secret yeah yeah i Nobody think i take- even noticed for like the longest time until somebody was like, how do I paint a face? And you're just like, ah. They're impossible. Can't be done. Yeah. <laughs> you just make a joke about it. Be like, it's my albatross. Yeah. Can't be done. I've never seen a good face. No, I, I take you, best miniature painter. Wait, does picking the other one make you worse at the other one? No. No? No, I'd be the best 40K player. Because like, I'm like, I'm already content with my, my painting skills. I would 100% take that. What painting? What the forty K player? Yeah. For the painting. Yeah. Forty K player. All day. Yeah, I'll take the forty K player one. So I, I don't care about winning tournaments. So just like, oh like every tournament I go to, I go like five and one. Or I go six and oh, hit the top eight, immediately get slapped down in the championship. Like, man, whatever. Yeah. I'll take the painting one and then uh open up a commission shop and then just anytime I got anything with a head on it, I'll return it without the head. <laughs> Big bold disclaimer: Don't don't paint faces. Yep. On your I don't do, I don't do faces. Mecky's no face painting painting studio. You can There's only one That's your rule. brand. That's your it's your no face. Yeah. yeah. It's a cool no brand. face painting. <laughs> there it is. Get somebody to draft it up. Hit so. every scene. Are you tired of just looking at painted models with faces? We are too. Here at No Face Painting, we say fuck them. <laughs> fuck them. What about you, Rob? I think it'd be easy to not paint faces. Yeah, I agree. So is that what you? I mean, that, is that what you, you? You'd be like, "Fuck it!" I'm just like elevating my paint game. Yeah. Rob, I need to paint more, anyways. Rob comes out of left field, greatest painter on planet Earth. <laughs> yeah, and it'd be like, it'd be like he has one pose. It's the same pose every time. <laughs> I mean, oh, 3D man. printing this shit. I don't know. Could, could Rob catch a break? People would probably be like, oh, that fucking kid from Spiky Bits all of a sudden paints really well. Like, <laughs> how Photoshop. Dope Photoshop skills. Yeah, son. Photoshopping. Yeah, that's what it is. Wow, this this like this real clickbaity thing from, from Spiky Bits just came out. I like how um, we were actually featured on a uh, 
a podcast recently, and I, I love how many ex podcast you can say it. I I didn't say it. I said it. Um, and I love apparently Russian. For, apparently, Rob works for the Russian uh, mafia or something. Well, it can't be. I mean, you gotta so, you gotta pick it. It's either the Russian, you know, deep state or yeah, deep state. Sorry, the Russian person. deep state. He works for the Russian like, deep state. You know, if you're going to go with our bit, Miniac, like, get it right. <laughs> I love how nobody, it's always, it's always, oh, the ads or, oh, the pop-ups or, oh, oh, whatever. It's never like, oh, he doesn't actually have good content. It's never like, oh, yeah, I was over here. I saw No, they're literally bit. saying like, oh, where did you hear that? Oh, I saw it on Spiky Bits and he's trying to find it on Spiky Bits, complaining about the ads, but like the whole time looking for the thing on Spiky Bits. <laughs> nobody ever accuses us. Of the thing that is our literal job. No. I love it. It's great. Yeah, they're like, oh, we're gonna get the malware. Mm, we're gonna get this, that. Mm. Yeah, that doesn't it doesn't work that way. Google actually like, you know, they'll de-rank you if there's something yeah. if your like site yeah. is giving out uh, malware. That's why like, it's, why it's an those, actual those people are so easy to write off because they're like, oh, it's got ads. And I'm like, you mean yep. the internet? The entire internet. The internet. You're you're complaining about the internet. Well, so our, so the way the ads uh, lay out and everything on the site, it's literally the same as Forbes.com. And I don't know about you, but Forbes, they've done some stuff right. So I'm okay with, it works for them, it works for us. Rob, I went to your website the other day, my computer got cancer. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Not going to lie, many, every time times before it? you went to Spiky Bits, did you also visit LobsterTube? Well, like, that's <laughs> one of my main destinations. Well, yeah, I mean, duh. they're unrelated. They're unrelated. There, Kenny. They're unrelated. I don't see the correlation. Nope. Yeah. No, they're not. <laughs> what about Amish Donkey? Did you go there too? Obviously, man. I have that pinned to my desktop. I have a redirect. It's, it actually makes you go there whenever you <laughs> click on something. Unrelated. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Every time, every time that I look at spiky bits on my phone, since like it, the ad block doesn't work that great on it, uh, I just think Rude. of Kazaa and LimeWire. <laughs> Yeah, like that. That's what you I just think get nostalgia, over. right? So, yeah, yeah. So Rob is providing you a emotional service of giving you a dose of nostalgia every time you go to his website. And you should thank him for that. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Rob. That's I my gift to you. It. And the penis bills. Thank you. That's a different. That's a different thing. Yeah, that's you pay him for those. That's that's, that's for my only cat's business. account. <laughs> Did I tell you about the time like Tumblr like banned my my posts over there because they said I I had a. Sexually explicit content? Yes. And it was, and they showed me, and it was the pictures of me holding something. They thought my fingers were dicks. Mm-hmm. That's why, I, that, that's what I think all the time when I see your hands, too. Nope. Nope. No. Not at all. That's why at the very beginning of this podcast, I was like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's been a scratchy day, man. It's been a scratchy day. I need some more lotion. All right. Well, this is a good would you rather. Now we know no, that Demeki is going to start a new painting studio and Rob is mm-hmm. going to get trolled even more on the internet. <laughs> the end. The end. Y'all are going to be the best Warrior Hammer players ever. We're waiting. Who don't win? Who don't win tournaments? <laughs> I just got to pick a faction that nobody plays and I will win best in faction every single year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you'll be best. Like you'll be Renaissance, everything. Mm hmm. All right, Rob, yeah. you want want to kick it over? Want, want to keep it pro? Do some news for us? News yeah, Memorial Dust or Rob Bear? I would do a shot of news. So coming in hot, there was a couple of mini controversies today. Uh, first one was um, Wikipedia was down. <gasps> I reached out to our... To your contacts in the Russian deep state? Yes. <laughs> so it was, what's going said, on with the website, Tuvarish? Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was like, hey what's going on? Are they still, you know, he's still getting DDoS. And he's like, yeah, but I took care of that. And, uh, he just, there was just a problem with the host. So no big deal. It's their backup. So all good there. Uh, second thing was I reached out to Adepticon about the, their model policy that a lot of people seem to have an opinion on as of late. Uh, oh, thanks. Can you expand upon that? Cause we only just heard about it. And we didn't know any oh, yeah. facts. Yeah. I can, uh, I can read you the post. Yeah. Cause actually I, I, I'm not caught up. I gotta, I gotta do some scrolling, scrolling here. Up, yeah. up, up, nope. Uh, Ty went in the squanchies viewer on the internet, uh, brought it up to us in tactics earlier. Right. Yeah. So, it's going around the 3D printer groups. Uh, so the first part is about bases. 
they just want you to have up to date bases. Sure, sure. Not awesome. controversial, right? Yeah. Not, not they have, The next section is uh, scratch built and count status models. Mm -hmm. Scratch built models and conversions can be used for units, but must adhere to the following guidelines. Models may not bold capitalized contain significant elements of pre-assembled and or pre-painted models or toys. Models may not be recasts or 3D printed equivalents. So you models. can't have a so you can't so a conversion or a scratch build cannot be a fully 3D 3D printed piece. Correct. And what it what it sounded like. Well, there's there's well, two more bullets. Two more. Yeah, give, oh, give me the rest sure. of the bullet points. Models must be consistent with the look and feel of the game system they belong in. Scratch built models should aesthetically evoke the production quality models they're intended to represent. For clarity, printed paper models or models constructed from building blocks, Legos, etc., do not meet this requirement. Models must adhere to all of the above restrictions. Rob? So all of this was the same. They just added the part about 3D because, you know, since the last Adepticon, a lot of folks has gotten into 3D printing, um, which is, to, you know, that's this isn't shocking. This is 2022. Yeah. So I reached out to Adepticon. I was like, hey, I know you know what's going on. What's is it like? Can you still have just no one for ones? Like, can you can I have accounts as like, can I have a printed out print off a gun? What's up? Like, what's up? And what what they said was basically have two rules. If you're using Forge World rules, you need Forge World models. Okay, we kind of I predict that in their rule. Then that's that's always been a thing, pretty much. It's not in there. Uh, you can have 3D bits, parts, upgrades, um, etc. You know, all all heads, shoulder pads, knights, upgrades, all that. But some part of those models should be GW. So basically, that thing that Wyatt showed us earlier. It's completely not what they mean. It's kind of backwards version of that. Yeah, yeah. that's. I mean, Adepticon has always had pretty draconian rules like this, but they never actually really enforce it as long as you go hard on the hobby. Yeah, right. And I feel like that would have way better optics if they were just like, "Hey, go wild on the hobby. If you have conversions, if you have proxies, if you have three D printed stuff, send us a picture." For approval, if you're if you're not worried about it, right? I say the exact same thing to anybody who plays in the Long War Doubles. Mm -hmm. like not only are conversions allowed, we encourage it. We encourage yeah. you to go hard as possible on the hobby, right? And if you're proxying something or you have a conversion or a third-party model, as long as it meets what it's supposed to be within a reasonable doubt. Yeah, they, I mean, yeah, fine. they did a good job saying things like the aesthetics. Like they're trying to say this with as much like – details possible like so like john patrick and chad's like what about a creature caster model you know so like if it's supposed to be for a forge world demon then no and not if it's yeah if it's for forge world and see yeah. we kind of predicted that like they've always had uh like an, they have an old school like ptsd response to forge world over the big babies time. we can they're that, big like babies. they've oh, always they've I always so strong they yeah, they've always had a ban list they've they've always made i mean like they're like the last guys who had a forge world ban list when we moved like in this hobby, like they don't like Forge World there. And so they've acknowledged that it's remember it because back in the day, Forge World was barely a part of the game and they became more and more and more yeah. part of the game. And they hate that, right? Like that's that goes against like they're like, ah, so there's the, it's a part of the game now. So they're, they're so their main rule is like it has to be the fucking model. That's what they're really saying. And based on your communication with them, they're also like really don't even care that much about 3D printing. Yeah. That they're saying well, is don't fucking 3D print Forge World models. We I've hate that. I've seen so many well, like 3D prints, proxies, uh, wild conversions, stuff like that at Adepticon over the years. As long as you go hard on the hobby, nobody cares. No, they don't. They honestly, right. I've never seen them. So, yeah, here, here's the thing. Like, all this shit, for the most part, is complaint driven. If you're going to show up with three mm -hmm. neon green filament printed Caladius grab tanks, go the fuck home. Yeah. Good point. Like, unless the event said you could. It's You're right. right. That is such a good point, Rob. It is 99% complaint driven. And if you're incurring complaints on yeah. a regular basis with your 3D printed models, you are going to probably get yeah. 
complaints so against you at Adepticon like, and your shit's going to get fucking decayed. I mean, we Show have... About that? Like, I, I just... Just, like, optically, this this ruling, like, this this piece of rules... It's, it's dumb it's, that they wrote it that way. Draconian, and then right? they said it's almost the draconian. opposite of it to yeah, you. Yeah, it's just like, why would you not just be transparent and just be like, as long as you... If you put forward, like, a reasonable effort into your army, do what you want, right? And if you, if you think that it's too out of line... Send it in for submission, right? Like literally every other fucking tournament. It's or- it's just that they just wanted to use a document they already wrote and add a thing to it, and then the internet exploded. And they're probably gonna have to put out an update, like because well, Rob, like or Rob has to like do I all think, their work I for think them. We and might tell be everyone. the update. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say or Rob is the update, and that's kind of ridiculous. So um, go, to, go to the chat. So Kara Quinn is asking about a similar model policy with Games Workshop, and yes, they actually yeah, did. Right it here. was in there. It was in there. Uh, release packet thing yeah. for Those the four different opens, opens, yeah. where basically they say like, oh, you got to right? play with our stuff. Yeah. And if you do any conversions, it's got to be with our stuff. Like no third parties, period. Like, they said print, you period. could do 3D prints, but it had to be original. Yeah. Like, yeah. It had to be original. So it like, you couldn't like, go to Colts and like download something. Oof. It had to be like of your own fruition. Yeah, in which case I designed that shit. Yeah. What are you going to no, yeah, no, like, uh, like Lyndon yeah. asks, well, I mean, he says, so I missed the answer. Would Wyatt's Thunder Warrior body uh, be legal in a Debdecon? Yes. It has 100%. GW parts on it. But if no, my company I mean, painted it, it would have came back with no head. Yeah. Yeah. So. And even if it didn't have GW axes on it, like it's complete driven. No one gives a shit. His shit is tight. I go fucking hard on yeah. the hobby. Right? Yeah, no one so shit. Like, yeah. That's almost always the real policy. And so you're here to hear Rob did his forensic journalism. He got answers from Adepticon and they contradict their statement in many ways. Uh, so if you have a bunch of sweet ass pop goes the monkey fucking shoulder pads or uh, 3D market, 3D made to order marketplace uh, conversion parts, you're probably going to be fine. 99%. Like, don't even don't sweat it. Yeah. Continue. What's next, Rob? I, I linked an article from a different website because I literally can't tell them apart sometimes between the two <laughs> sites. Nice. I was like, oh, that looks like me. I was like, that's a Bell Lost Souls article. That's strange. I mean, you know, it all looks the same. It's not like I did like half the work there for. Well, Rob, the same impersonation is the sincerest form of flattery. So, no, I mean, dude, I was like, dude, I did. I don't even want to talk. No, about that's it. a lot of history there. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of history there. Move on. Move on with the next news. The next bit of news. Uh, let's see. What do we got? Oh, uh, G Dub. Well, let's go over the pricing for the new stuff coming out. So this weekend's the pre-orders for the Black Library Celebration stuff, which a lot of different books and things. Um, I'm not going to really go down the list, but there's quite a few different books. The two miniatures that are coming out, the Horse Heresy characters, Fafnir, Ron, Ran, and Dominion Zaphon. They're both $32, which I was kind of surprised about the price. I figured they'd be the new imp- uh, independent character price of $38, but $32, I guess that's the the new price for the $30 minis. Um, so they'll be coming out and going on pre-order this weekend. Uh, there's only rules for them in horse heresy, unfortunately. So, horse heresy. Yep. I Season thought, two, I My Little s- Pony. Yeah, I thought they said they weren't going to update the prices anyways until March. March seventh. Yeah. So yeah. I guess I I don't know. They can always forward like whatever. Uh, who who knows? But I mean, thirty two also set whatever price they want for Forge World. Yeah. Uh, no, these are plastic. Oh, uh, wait, what? Yeah, they're plastic. Well, wait. If you go to Forge World and you look at Kill Team, I think they have plastic kits. Or um, yeah, you can get part of the plastics for the upgrades and stuff. Well, no, straight up for the uh, what is it? The um, Astra Militarum guys, Death Death Corps of Krieg, I think. Oh, they got the plastic ones over there for the infantry. Yeah, I think so. That's weird because they're they're a little bit more out of scale. Um, hmm. Because I remember I was like, wait a minute, when did Forge World start doing plastic? I guess now. 
Huh. Uh, well, I mean, they're, they're, just, they're just a GW. Like, you I mean, are they just selling the GW ones via their yeah. portal? Yeah. Like, if you thing, ordered yeah. the Damocles Command Rhino, it still had plastic components, you know, in there. Yeah, but they haven't been... They, this Is this the first time they've produced, like, a fully plastic injection molded kit? But but that's a G-Dub kit. It's, it's a, not a it's not a Forge no, World. No, I'm talking about Fafnir Rand and this Blood Angel Gibraltar. Oh, yeah, but I don't... Those aren't Forge World. They're for Horus Heresy. Um, oh, just you know, like just like had, Betrayal Calf and Prospero Burns and stuff. Yeah, all oh. the Mark armors that they did in okay, plastic well, and such. Cool. I might actually buy one of these guys then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this Imperial Fist dude looks fucking cool. Yeah, I saw that picture on the internet. Like, it looks yeah. good. You know. Uh, they do look pretty cool. So there's uh, those going on pre-order this weekend. Uh, they also announced a new exclusive primary uh, company champion with Legends rules. So he's not, there is no 40K Space Marine primary company champion yet. Uh, and there's yes. one called Shaman. Yeah, for uh, event miniatures. So you'll be able to get those, I guess, starting with Adepticon, they said. Oh, shit. So those would be hot, hot, hot. I've already got cold. some emails from people talking about, hey, can you get those for me? Yeah, they're going to be, uh, um, I mean, the last one in 2019, that Primaris Captain, uh, you were able to get it. They they basically had infinity supply. So hopefully that's the case again, too. Uh, we found, or I don't know, it was going around, I saw it somewhere, that new uh, Unit Crunch. Uh, it's basically a Math Hammer app. So if you like those little graphs and all the cool things you want to map out your units and how they do and kind of geek out and do it. Uh, check that out. It's called Unit Crunch. Do they present yeah. Venn diagrams? Not exactly. I, don't, I only accept my information in Venn diagram form. Do you know what a Venn diagram is? Yeah, boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, so there is new horsey, horse hair, horsey rules <laughs> for those models. Uh I don't even know what the horse heresy rules are anymore. It's like 7.5. I don't even know. But uh yeah, they'll be cool. They look they look dope. And probably one of the bigger uh announcements, product release announcements, is that the, the Army Painter Speed Paint starter set goes on sale Saturday. So oh, yeah. Uh, I think it's 40 bucks. Definitely worth it. If you like that, you're definitely gonna want to pick up the whole set. Um, I think those go live the weekend of Adepticon. So down to about a month left for that one. That is basically all the the newsy kind of stuff out there that I'm that I'm personally tracking. Uh, I did want to talk about those new rules that dropped today for the Eldar uh, Webway Gate. That's that big terrain piece they put out with like the curvy arches. Doesn't look like boobs at all. Um, Thank you for that and, clarification. I almost yes. forgot what boobs looked like. It's kind of like a banana. It's like a space elf banana, two of them. Oh, so it looks and like that. Tommy Lee's junk. <laughs> yep, there you go. Right. In a hammock. Nice. Um, so I'm just going to paraphrase the rules, and I'll let you guys, if we need to read them, read them. That's fine. But basically, this these tall fortification shape, huh? It's a fortification. Yeah, uh, I would imagine it is. Yeah, okay. um, it it can be set up 12 inches away from the enemy deployment zone or the enemy in general, um, boom, they're there. And the little the little spires have to be three inches from each other because there's two different ones, right? Mm -hmm. Once that happens, it's all good. Something can come in from reserve from within six inches of this thing. And when it does, if it happens to be within nine inches of the enemy, it basically counts as being in assault with them. So you can't overwatch or engagement, I guess. Uh, you can't overwatch them and they get to swing on them. They, they count as charging. Wait, wait. So you can come out of this portal in engagement range? Yeah. 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 You're just, boop, I'm here. Web, webway strike. Oof. And it gets even more crazier because there's a reduction on putting things into webway strike. And they, they say in the article that it's only one CP to do it with the avatar, which I think might be pretty hilarious. Wow. Uh, I really enjoy it when Eldar gets a new codex and they can just break all the rules. I mean, Fantastic. engagement range, pretty serious. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it also gives like cover. I think it's. So it has light cover, heavy cover, unstable position, inspiring Eldari, uh, which gives a one inch uh, plus one leadership bubble within six. 
I don't know how much leadership is a thing anymore. Not a super lot, but um, Type. they're pretty cool. Like they just look neat, you know. And it's you, see, you always see these things all over the, the Eldar art, and now it's like a thing that everybody's gonna want to bring. Sort of like a Eldar drop pod, I suppose. Mm. Well. To answer the question in chat, it's it's incredibly different from a drop pod because with a drop pod, the drop pod cannot end up within nine inches of any enemy units. Yeah. And the units that pile out of it cannot show up within nine of any enemy units. And there is no way in the codex to get past that rule. So the ability to have this this like fortification shut set up, especially because you can you can basically put a fortification almost anywhere you want to on the board. There's very few. Well, you have to, you it. can only set it up 12 inches from an enemy or when you set it up, it has to be 12 inches from an enemy or their board or their deployment zone. Right. So there's, yep. there's very few restrictions, right? And so being able to set this up, say, right near the middle of the table in a lot of these missions that have yeah, a central objective, which you want to own to win yep. those missions. And being able to just be like deep strike directly into engagement range when a lot of units in this Eldar Codex are going to have things like fight first and you're going to have oh, yeah. multiple avenues to have point and click you fight last. It's incredibly powerful and it basically breaks the core rules of how 40k works. Well, I mean, the case in point is Banshees, the new yeah. rules for Banshees, like Banshees. literally and, and the thing is, is you don't even necessarily need fight last it, because it counts as being charged. You right. count as being charged as soon as you come out of the webway portal into engagement. It's just doubly powerful because you have all these avenues to be like, oh, you're bringing units that can fight first? Like, no, sir. Like, mm -hmm. no. <laughs> but I mean, breaking all I, the rules. So there's a couple thoughts. Yeah. Put in the middle of the table is incredibly powerful because you can get that center objective and stuff. But you can. Like you can't set up an engagement range unless the enemy is literally there. So like yeah. if you don't if you don't go near it, it's a very powerful tool though, right? It's not well, sure. Like not being all doom and gloom. Like it's it's fine. Like it's not that big a deal. I'm just being joking because like every time Eldar comes out with a new hot decks, they always have this like elfy way to get around all the rules that we have to play by and they get to do all this other stuff. And so it's just like, oh, okay, yeah, more of that. Got it. Yeah, and it's a six-inch bubble to to be wholly within when you uh, yeah, so, come out. I mean, I don't even know if you could put a vehicle there, to be honest. Well, they like, give you three inches, right? Well, yeah, the spires are three inches, and then you have to be six inches from both or from one yeah, both, whole one. Both. Both. This is both. Um, six so, inches of both of the Wraithbone arches of a friendly webway gate unit. So you just had to get one, play with it for a little bit, figure out the yeah, yeah, the, the limit of it. placement for each. You how know, many points does it have? Points? Do we know how much it costs? Uh, we know how much it used to cost. Let me go. Uh, look well, you're gonna have to buy the codex for that, Kenny. <laughs> Don't worry. Whatever it costs, it'll change. Yeah, just curious. I mean, I mean, like the webway, the web, the Drukari webway gates went out of. Um, as soon, like as soon as the decks came out, they 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 sold out. Oh yeah, everything's gonna go out of stock. It's ninety five points currently. Inquisitor she Shevik says eighty points in chat. Yeah, solid tool. I love it. And the thing is, I look at it as just like it's just a war gear you buy at that point, right? It's just mm -hmm. it's like it's like having a guy having a thing that says like my shit deep strikes. And is, because I spent points, I could distract into engagement range. Right. right? Yeah, but it has solid a piece of utility. It has a bunch of conditions, though. Right. You know, I have to place this guy that can appear in engagement range who has this deep strike and it's only one location on the battlefield. First off. Right. 
and it has to be within X of this one location. So you're, you're, you're like, once you put that thing down, it's like, that's the place the special guy shows up. There's no like, my dude to teleports to here. No, it's, it's locked in your pain points to unlock this new piece of versatility. That is pretty fucking cool. Has the correct amount of conditions. We, we know what it does and we know how to, to avoid it. And if it's like almost any fortification in the game. Yeah. You just shoot it and blow it up, blow it up. It bothers you. You know, like I think um, it's pretty cool. So the old the old stats on it were tough to say fourteen wounds with a five up inball, three up save. And you still have to put it five inches apart. So apparently uh Auspex Tactics covered it. Eighty points. Oh, it can't be destroyed. Can't now. be destroyed. Uh, that's a little bit of a monkey wrench. That will be a monkey wrench. Yeah. I mean I think it's tight though. For eighty points, like well, I think I think that's the correct points, honestly, for it. It's the a, other th- the other thing is too though, is that when we're dealing with player optimized terrain, like what is the how are the TOs gonna handle the fortifications? Because normally like they have to follow the same rules uh, as player optimized terrain, right? Yeah, so there's a stipulation in the in the Warzone Knockman thing hmm. where hey. I believe it talks about it. Like we you can like you're good to go. You don't get fucked. Basically, is yeah. is the summary of that. <laughs> right. Right. If you have if you have like fortifications, um, you're allowed to like put it down, and you can like you can even like replace a piece of like if it's physically impossible for you to fairly place it on the table where you where you want to, um, you can replace a single piece of terrain with your fortification. Oh, I forgot about the GW rule too. So the that. GW rule is that it cannot be set up within three inches of any other terrain feature that is not part of its own data sheet. Yeah, well, it's actually kind yeah. of tight because that means it's like same, it's, it's pretty same easy to you're always gonna be able to place it because yeah. they're like, oh, it's impossible to place. Remove this piece of terrain. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's why they tightened it up within three inches instead of five. Thing is, I like it. I don't think there's anything broken about sense. it. I don't think there's anything OP. I think it's you're paying 80 points to get this cool fucking toolkit in your army. You don't get to bring another troop choice. You do. You're saying, hey, I got this thing, and that's very Eldar. I mean, like the Webway Strike Force, all that shit. It's so canon. That's so part of their shit. Like, yo, we just opened this fucked up gate. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> and then, like, so, rest yeah. of us hobos are they're like, yo, one. those those elves are opening up that gate. Let's uh, let's not go there. <laughs> Yeah, I'd be like, that looks scary. Bright light. Ah. Okay, wow. That's all I got. I like I it. it I think a, it's cool. I think it was pretty good. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, if in practice, there's there's lots of, I mean, like, you could you could pile in models to where their stuff can't be placed within the bounds of its rules. So they can't oh, yeah. come out of the gate. Oh, no. Yeah, well, when, yeah, when, when people used to play shit like this back it. in the day, remember the Dark Elder had that? The, the, remember how, like, the whole Webway Strike Force bullshit yeah, that Dark yeah. Elder had? And you just put a dude on the Bro, portal. Bro, I would fuck those dudes so hard, man. <laughs> like they're the like dude on the portal. They'd be like, uh, I don't think I can play my army. He's like, nah, you fucking lost. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody didn't or think so that one through. That, that Eldar like to break the rules. Like, I'm like, oh yeah, so they can come out of this and be an engager range. Cool, cool, cool. Hmm? I mean, but you can you can do that with uh strategic reinforcements too. Yeah, but it's got to be your back table mm-hmm. edge. Yeah, so they paid 80 points to do it from this one other location. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Wish I could pay 80 points and do that shit. No, me too. But like yeah, that's but every up. codex gets to break the rules in some capacity. You get one cheat code or several, and that's the, that's currently one of theirs. And it's not even that, like, I don't think it's that easy to utilize in any capacity for like a pregame strategy. I think it's like very situational and you got to be the kind of guy who can like m- modulate your your, oh, yeah. your plan to utilize it correctly. Oh, dude. So, so Falcons are going to be pretty spicy. Might see a return to people bringing a lot of Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons. Yep. Hell yeah. yeah. All day. <laughs> 30 birds. That's good. I mean, it's more, I mean, more hardware on the table, more sci-fi. I love it. Yeah. We were talking about that earlier and I was like, oh man, none of you guys remember Falcon Rush. Kenny remembers Falcon Rush. Tell him about I that. I don't remember it. I mean, fucking Rob. No, not, not you guys, you guys, but the people I was talking to earlier. Like they haven't been playing 40k long enough to remember. I've blown Falcon up Rush. two. I've blown up two Super Falcons the whole time I played that edition. Yeah, yep. I've, I've blown <laughs> them up twice. Like blew up one, and the person that owned it won uh, the doubles tournament at uh, LVO. Say so what? Can you name him? Wait, you blew up one. I blew up one at. 
Vegas at the what 2007 2008 Vegas GT. And I was playing against Blackmore. Oh, that's and he's right. Like, I think you just killed it. And I was like, Yeah, I did yep. with one last game. one last can and broke all the math. Point <laughs> zero one percent chance, baby. I did <laughs> I it even harder. Win. I did it even harder, Rob. Do you remember back in those days, if it had the skimmer roll, you had to hit it on sixes in close combat? Oh yeah. Remember? And yep. so and we also didn't have the rule of like you know, it, this was like you hit it on the armor facing you were in too. So like later it evolved yeah. to it always hit back armor. Like literally, dog, you had to roll sixes. Did it. So it wasn't like, oh, I crushed a tank in close combat. Like not skimmers. They had invisibility in close combat. Like so I ran a great unclean one, which is my jam back in fourth edition. Oh, Fucking yeah. Popped his ass yeah. out. had this whole move because you can bypass the rhino rush with him. Because remember, you they made them death coffins. You can never get out and charge like if, like all this shit. Well, like I had found a loophole where like, you remember how demonic possession worked? Uh, so like to, if you, you took a gr- on the strength, if you took a greater demon in your list, he's in one of your champions. Oh, so and, the bloodthirster was like one of your just and, and you and you could buy extra 10. war gear. Yeah. So he fought as the demon. So he had a strength profile, everything. But starting turn two, you could pop him out and you had to roll like a four up to pop him out. And he uh, you could buy war gear like the chains of possession where you could re-roll that to like keep him yep. in a turn or out a turn. Right. And so I would run my Rhino Rush up in fourth edition, which broke Rhino Rush. And based on the rules, like if he's in a transport, they like throw him out. But like he's got, it's happening, motherfuckers. And so in the step, I would bring him in. He would be placed by the Rhino according to the rules. And he just starts his turn there. And then he moves and charges. So I had this whole like workaround with the great unclean one. And I was like, okay, this super Falcon's going to win the game. Here he goes. Great unclean one with his fucking five attacks, eight on sixes. Strength seven. God damn it. Against armor 12. Fucking pulled it off. Threw them there dice, hit them sixes. Bow, son. <laughs> I was like, dog, that happened so many years ago. I still remember it so vividly because <laughs> that's, that's how one. rare yeah. that shit was. Like, so I do hope they do come back in some capacity that makes them awesome. And so that way there's a reason to play more sci-fi hardware. You know, people love probably that shit. people listening to this podcast right now that don't even know that Falcons exist. They've yeah. been gone for so wow. long. That's well, true. they're also a pretty old kid, so they are. I mean, like they haven't been the good version either for a while. You know, like Night Spinner chassis, uh, Night Spinner Prism good. chassis. Like they've always they've been for years now. Like the more the better of the of that kit. So cool. Uh, <clears throat> kick it over to Wyatt to shout out some patrons. Is that a thing? Nope. Nope. Okay, no new patrons. <laughs> Moving on. We only got a couple, so. Uh, we would we would we would love to get a few more. We're eleven away from uh, I believe a hundred. We only so, have eleven more to we go. We have eleven more, oh so my God. And we can start hopefully doing some t-shirt promos and afford to drink beers at, at events. Yeah, because what about what about feet picks? Feet picks? We got those. Yeah. Oh, that's on only those are cats. acceptable currencies. Oh, okay. Yeah, those are on only cats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, we don't we don't dilute our uh, Patreon content with fee picks. Gotcha. Kara Quinn says you never shouted me out, you bastards. Uh, well, there you go. Shout <laughs> it out. <laughs> thank, thank you, Kara Quinn, for <laughs> signing up to Patreon, our man. Patreon. I don't. I must have missed it. No, you. We did it last oh. week. You even said like, "Oh, the oldest man on the internet." Like you, you got shouted out, dude. You just don't listen to the whole podcast, and now you've proved it. <laughs> I never listen to anything. <laughs> Imperious Seth says, "Me neither." Ass hats. Imperious Seth is the whole reason we had a beer fund. That's true. Yeah, dude. We never shouted him out. We shout you out every podcast, dude. Come on. I think he's. I don't I mean, see why it's named half the time. Yeah. No, because I have the uh, alert sound off when we're podcasting, so it doesn't make it through the podcast. But Imperious Seth. Shout out that man. He throws us a five spot every week and we get to drink because of him. And we depleted that fund at Vegas. And now we need to rebuild that fund so that uh, Rob can drink a Cherokee open. Then why? We're going to need it because I ain't paying for all that booze. 
<laughs> yeah, just pick up some Trulies from Costco on your way, dude. Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> Facts. Shout out to all the patrons and all the supporters. We do appreciate everything you do. Uh, we've been resistant to this change because we put so much effort to build in our own paywall, our own back end. And me and Rob were holding it very precious, like kind of like a sunk cost fallacy. Like we just put so much work into it. And Patreon makes everything easier. So it's been a migration period over the last, you know, six months. So thanks everyone who's, 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 who's you know, come along for the ride and we do provide a new piece of content. If you're first time listening here, maybe you are aware of the after hours content that's been around for years. Our pregame show are almost our like rehearsal. Uh, but now there's a new little like 10 to 15, sometimes longer uh, before the after hours behind the scenes where it's like, oh, like we're, we're still putting our cameras in the right place. And, you know, sometimes, you know, why, you know, we get some Wyatt hot takes. Sometimes, you know, Rob doesn't have a shirt. That has never happened. The scales are beautiful. I wish you guys could see them. <laughs> All right, let's do it. What happened over the last weekend? Please tell mm. me that Tao did not win anything. Oh, no, nope, not once. I, I can't can't tell you that, friend. <laughs> Fortunately. Uh, completely to no one's surprise, a massive uh, seven-round major happened in Tao won the week that it came out. Cool, cool, cool. Um so yeah, it was a very interesting uh, weekend, kind of following the uh, Beachhead Brawl, which is a seven-round major, a bunch of big names there. Um, over the first handful of rounds, we saw a lot of Tau stuff kind of go 3-0, basically the day one 3-0, right? Um, and then uh, over day two, we saw a lot of those get, get slapped back down, right? So that, that happens a lot, especially with the new Spicy Codex, people that have it. Uh, already or people that just jump first time into that army when it gets real spicy with a new release, they show up, they have their newfound power, they rock out a 3-0 and on the first day, get up into the higher brackets against more veteran players and immediately get slapped back down, right? And so that's kind of what we saw with Tao. So a handful of guys made it all the way near the end and ended up winning. And then the majority of Tao players kind of got shoved back down into the middle field after day one. But a lot of custodies ended up in the top 10, um, as well as some Dark Horse factions like Death Watch. Got to shout out Michael Costello for showing up and hitting top 10 with Death Watch in this current meta. So, like, good for him. It was pretty cool. Um, got six custodies, then Death Watch, then Tyranids, and then two Tau players. So Alex Harrison ended up winning with Tau and uh, Vic VJ. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce this. Like V-I-J-A-Y. Hopefully I said that right. So congrats to those two guys for going undefeated. You said his last, his name is ZJ? No, VJ. VJ. Maybe the H is an, the J is an H sound. Vahe? Vahe. I, I don't know. I, I I've not heard of this person before, so I'm sorry if I butchered your name. Um, but yeah, so Alex Harrison and Vic Vijay went undefeated at the seven round tournament, and Alex only won by nine battle points. So it was a very, very close race. Hey, but they didn't play each other, right? No. No. Right. no. Uh, a lot of the custodies are still running Emperor's Chosen. That seems like a pretty solid choice uh, right now, just because there's a lot of utility there, there's a lot of defense there. Um, the lists vary. They're not all the same list, mm -hmm. um, but things are shifting with the Tau meta. We're seeing a little bit less of the bigger, more expensive vehicles. They can get slapped down really easy. Um, so very interesting on that side. I'm thinking that over time, as the meta shifts and when like Eldar comes out, we're probably going to see more things like Shadow Keepers because shadow keepers have ways to alter the order in the fight phase. And that could be a good defense against all of the Eldar stuff that has fight first or fight last or what have you. Um, you seen Alex's list, Demeki? No, I have not. All right. Well, let's, let's go over it. So yeah. uh, starting off with a patrol and he is Tau Sept. Okay. He's got an ethereal with a bunch of stuff. So let's look at it. He's got sense of stone. Yep. So, so the ethereal, the way the ethereal works now, 
Mm-hmm. It used to be uh, you just invoke one of those, right? Uh, I think it was in the movement phase. Right now, it's like a litany. Okay, so, so these are like his, his yeah. litanies. Yeah, during the command phase. Cool. So he's got sense of stone. Okay. Exemplar of the Motka. Wisdom. Hey, that's his warlord trait. Yeah, wisdom of the guides. What is what is wisdom of the guides? Wisdom of the guides. I think that might be an upgrade for him to cast on twos. Oh, okay. For his litany. Yep. Uh, he's got a stratagem on him. It's called Promising Pupil. So Promising Pupil is just them get... So that was him paying for that additional warlord trait ah, since gotcha, he's not his gotcha. warlord. So that's your actual warlord yeah. trait. Cool, cool, cool. And then he's got the Humble Stave. Is that a relic? Yeah, that is a relic. Dope. Uh, that relic, the Humble Stave... Uh, that relic in your command phase, the bearer uh, on the battlefield, it can intone one additional invocation. So they, oh, he gets second the litany's guy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, he's got long strike sitting in his his hammerhead with the big old rail gun. Of course. Oh, classic. Way the biggest right. rail guns. Does he have bodyguards? Well, that's one thing we were probably going to end up talking about. Yeah. So in in, in this detachment, no. Okay. Uh, and so after after that, he's got some. He's got a unit of crew. Yep. He's got a unit of crew hounds. Right. Okay. Uh, and then he's got shit. a second a second patrol attachment, also tau sept. Um, additional relic stratagem. He's got commander in crisis battle suit. He's got precision of the hunter. Okay. With a fusion blaster, onager gauntlet, plasma rifle. He's also got the promising pupil. It's got the Tau Flamer, Target Lock, and Thermo Neutronic Projector. I fucking love these names. Whatever yeah. that is. That guy, that guy's a yeet. Like you yeet yeah. him and he will He's hopefully kill something. Dope. Yeah, because uh what that warlord trade allows him to do is re-roll the hit and the weird. Cool. DPS. He's got some more crew. Uh and then he's got two units of battle suits with a ton of shit on them. Let me guess. Uh, uh, air fragmentation. Uh, so let's see. So one unit has things like cyclic ion blasters and plasma rifles. Uh, okay. One guy has the Iridium battle suit for that two up save. Yep. Uh, the other unit is full of air bursting fragmentation projectors and plasma rifles. Yep. Pretty standard. Uh, some Vespid. It's got two units of Vespid. That's for engage, air, engage and um, rod. Yeah. New rod. And then he has uh, two dummy thick units of broadsides with uh, rail rifles and smart missile systems with velocity trackers. Yeah. Yeah. So that seems about right. Yeah, I think it's this? interesting. Fourth that edition right? with all these crew and Vespid running around. Yeah, that's, going that's, that's, that's one wild. thing that I thought was interesting is that he opted for the crew over any of the fire warriors. I mean, it's dope. I mean, I love it. Like we got units I haven't seen in years. Long yeah. strike. Have haven't seen him in years. Convention. Yeah, they're very they're very utility chaff troops. Yeah, I was surprised that he brought long strike because even in my current list that I'm working on right now, uh, long strike's not in it and. Yeah, I'm surprised he, he didn't take Shadow Sun because Shadow Sun is now uh, a Supreme Commander. So she, she could be put in a Supreme Command detachment. And then you can also take another Commander in Battle Suit now mm-hmm. on top of that. So Shadow Sun's actually viable to take. Plus, she gives out Chapter Master rerolls. I've seen so, a lot of people run Shadow Sun. She seems very flex. The towels the, the towel to get to automatically move in this all phase like the old days. Uh, what do you mean? No, do you they mean? don't have jet infantry anymore. Yeah, no, no. that hasn't been a thing for like. They do have some editions. crazy shenanigans now with devilfish that, which I thought was surprising since this guy didn't bring any. Uh, oh yeah, that one's there's cool. a stratagem to where it's called combat deparca- uh, debarkation. Uh, if you select Monka, it depends on your philosophy when you can do it. Uh, Monka's rounds one, two, and three, and then Kayun is uh, three, four, and five. Um, until the end of the phase, each time one of these models makes a normal move after it has moved, any units embarked within the transport can disembark. Any units that do so cannot charge this turn. 
which your towel. So oh, sick. So some devil fish rushing. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's the wombo combo with, with the breachers. Uh, breach and clear. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Ten breachers pop out. There's also a uh, you can put out a reroll aura from the devil fish. Yep. And it, like that's you can with shot knots. Yeah. Oh, that's um, sick. They're just like, yo, here's our dubstep guns. Take 20 fucking serfs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, uh, what Wyatt's talking about is onboard sensors, I believe. Yeah. So the, the breacher guns, when you're real up close, they're like strength six minus two, one damage, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you get an additional AP if you're yep. using Montcon shooting at the closest unit, which they are. So it's just like buckets of dust. so how powerful are the broad size now though so they have the light rail gun how much damage so the rail gun so now good. deals mortal wounds on wound that so as soon as a as soon as a wound goes through because there's other shenanigans to where any sixes are an auto wound as soon as it wounds it deals a mortal wound on top of its normal damage what's its normal damage uh its normal damage is d6 plus nope it's d3 plus three sorry so, nine strength so how many shots? So, th- th- so two shots, two shots per broad. So zone. he's got a total of 12, six in each unit. So that, so that point and click and then the smart missiles don't need line of Wait, sight. Are we talking about the broadside or are we talking about yeah, the broadsides? Broadsides. You get, well, you can only have three. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. So if they're two shots, oh, okay, right, unit, got you, he's got yeah, two yeah. units of three. So 12 yeah, yeah. total light rail gun shots. I gotcha. And yeah, then yeah, each yeah. one of those guys also has a smart missile. So that's no line of sight and two, two damage. Is that what that is? No, 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 no. You need line of sight for the for the rail. No, I'm talking about the smart, smart missiles. missiles. Oh, smart missiles. Yeah, no line of sight and ignores cover. How many shots per smart missile system? Four. Four? So yeah. they normally have <laughs> Twelve two for you unit. each. So. so a lot of ignoring LOS with high quality in their neg 2, 2 damage smart missiles? No, they're five minus one, one. One one okay, that's a lot easier yeah. pill as well. Still and quality actually, shots. They it's factor it. in the mock cost stuff too. Flat, that's where it gets flat a little, eight. Yeah, that's where it starts. A little weird, crazy. where it's like if they're shooting at the closest unit and there's a range band of like eighteen, twelve, nine, um, you get that additional AP. So depending on where their target is, they might get that additional AP. Yep. That's also how the air bursting fragmentation projectors work because you stack the crisis suit unit to the gills with those. So you're rolling like 10 D6 number of shots, strength four, minus one, one damage. So only but one of his crisis unit squads is equipped with the air burst? Yeah. He's got one one unit with like all of that shit. And then yeah. another unit with more anti-elite, anti-tank weapons with plasma infusion. Yeah, because plasma is eight minus three, three damage. I mean, you have the codex, dog. Yeah, I have it right here. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty nasty because it's uh, really easy to protect those units and still do usable damage yeah. while you're waiting for your opportunities to close the game. Yeah. It's a, it's a very balanced mix of point and click, like remove yeah, yeah. type type stuff. And also math hammer where they're yeah. like, I'm going to roll this bucket of dice. You're going to roll a bucket of saves. You'll probably fail a lot. Yeah. yeah. And, and it can do it safely. Like that's yeah. Also, the Tau Flamer is really good. It's now D6 plus two, uh, 12 inches, four, and then Manka, obviously, you'll have minus one AP because it, it's zero AP innately. Tell me um, about these uh, litanies. The, what, what oh, kind the, of, invo- the invocations? Yeah. yeah. What kind yeah, of bust do they you. have in that? So Sense of Stone is pretty much the same. Uh, Sense of Stone is a five-up feel no pain. Uh, Storm of Fire, if this invocation is inspiring, uh, within s- uh, select one friendly unit within six inches of the ethereal, that unit can make ranged attacks without any action it is performing failing. So you get to perform an action. Yeah, yeah I get it. So on the Field of Pain, is the same thing? He puts it on a unit? Uh, let me, yeah, it's select one. And is there any, what, what's six. the restriction on it? It's core. Core, okay. Yeah. Which, Almost everything in the book has. No, I got it. So you're gonna, you're gonna in practice, you're gonna see that on the big unit of crisis suits or on a unit of broadsides most of the time. I get it. Yep. So broadsides, I don't know if you knew this or not. They have a two up armor save, and they're eight wounds a piece now. I did not know that they're eight wounds a piece. They are dummy thick. Yeah. Yeah. Eight wounds each, two up save, fight, feel no pain, get fucked. Yep. They say because like even the riptide, like you look at a riptide now, you're just like, why? Just take broadsides. 
Yeah. Damn. Um, so it can just sneak up. You can just into cover and just have funeral paint on it and just say, suck it. What a beast. More, and, but here's the other thing too. You could also, because drones have changed. It doesn't work the same where before when you would deploy with Tau, right? The drones would break off and they would be like their own separate unit. Now they're permanently part of the unit unless you use another stratagem to break them off. And when they're inside the unit, anytime the unit takes damage, you can put it on the drones. Yeah, just so, like normal wound allocation. They're they're ablative wounds, basically. Yeah. So that's that's how they originally were. And then we so, had this weird shit. And now it's back to the way it was. Yeah. So now you put a shield drone in there and they have two wounds and they have a, a five up invul. So how many shield drones can go in a broadside unit? Uh, I think six. Do they take up one of their weapon slots? They do no, that? it does not take up weapon slots. It takes the, the battle slots. suits have hard points. They can take. So each battle in, suit um, can take two of the following. So yeah. they can take six. Damn. No. The, they can take six of those. So in so in Alex's list, in each of the in each of the units, he has four shield drones. Yeah. So eight ablative wounds with a four up invul save. Yeah. No, that's in. Do they have a four up or a five up invul? Because sure uh, it out. Pretty sure shield drones have a four. They used to. I mean, historically, they had a four. They have two wounds. Oh yeah, they do have a four. They had a four. So with, with feel no pain, I mean that unit yeah. is so hard to dislodge. So like you can have them both hiding behind obscuring terrain. You just be safe in deployment right. like you do. Then and they can pop your- out into cover. They can be in thick. So they have a one plus save. Eight a blade of four up five ups once you do the fucking invocation. And this mm-hmm. one unit can be the one that like creeps out and is unsafe. It point clicks. You hit everything with the safety shots. And then it's almost like bait. Like, oh, I'm going right. to shoot back at that fucking unit. It's like, mm. <clears throat> you have to burn through eight, four up, five ups before you even have to burn That's through 20. Yeah. yeah. Same way for the crisis battle suits. Each one of these crisis suit units has five shield drones. So that's 10. Yep four up ablative wounds that you have to chew through before you touch one battle. Suit. Good grief. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gotta and I think, I think that's one thing that people are struggling with too, because they think that maybe they're looking at Tau as old Tau to where they could, you know, focus the drones, but you can't no. You got to focus the unit that the drones in. That's crazy. Cause like, that's so tanky. That's the weird I thing too. It. Is that like, all, uh, at least as far as like shooting is concerned, these guys are really tanky now. And um, Tau take up a lot of real estate on the board now, so it's going to be a real tall order to take certain secondaries like retrieve knockwind data behind enemy lines, and sometimes even teleport homers, um, because they can just kind of like push out into kind of a mobile firing line where they're kind of like in the midfield, but they're still their their table quarter or their deployment zone is still very well boxed out from you being able to do anything. Oh yeah. You can't get into the backfield. That makes sense. And then if they do take vehicles, they have a stratagem where they can like deploy scramblers off of one of their vehicles. So you can't come within 12 of any of their vehicles. My man has long strike in his list, bro. Like what do you think's going on there? Like it's very well put together. And so the yeah. winning towel list right now is utilizing a a number of shield drones in these units, right? Four in each of the broadside units and then five in each of the fucking crisis suit units. So like that's some tanky ass shit, man. Like I love it. I love I like that's uh, it's like, it's, you know, we're not we're not going to just blow away with fucking a bunch of heavy bolter shots like we are fucking coming down in our anime Iron Man Gundam suits. And it's, we are fucking hitting you with them fucking wrist cannons, blah, suckers. And then like shots are playing off of them and shit. That's sick as fuck. It's so interesting though, because like he doesn't have any marker lights, right? He has like no pathfinders. Does he even have like marker light drones? Yeah, he's got a handful of marker drones spread throughout. Okay, okay. Because uh, that that was one thing that uh, I mean, what, even what I like about it. He, he's he's got like four main offensive units that kind of need marker lights, right? Because yeah. like not oh, counting yeah. long strike, not counting the, the broad battle lights. suits. Because with the for people who don't know, the way that marker lights work now is you just do it in your movement phase as a as an action. They auto completes yep. at the end of your movement phase. And on a three up, you put a marker light on a unit and it can stack. So you can have up to five or whatever, right? Yep. 
Now, the effects of the marker light do not stack or give additional bonuses like they used to. It just gives a unit shooting at your unit with a marker light plus one to hit. Yep. Plus one to hit does not stack either. It's just one instance of plus so one. So, like to these hit. guys shooting at Mortarion plus one to hit. But if you had two marker lights, once they're completed, you take away that one token. Yep. And then yeah, these so guys are going to shoot them for plus one to hit. But then the third one doesn't get plus one to hit because you only right. hit. And it's exactly. just, it's by unit, not by weapon mm-hmm. or anything like that. So, this big dick bandit unit of crisis suits that has like a billion shots, they only take one instance of that marker light. So, mm-hmm. realistically, you don't actually need a whole lot of marker no. lights if you're smart with target priority. Yep. And, and the thing is, too, is that, like, if you're playing against Tau, you know, minus one to hit is still going to be huge because you can double go to minus two, and that will put Tau at the five instead of at four. Can't you only take minus a maximum minus one to hit? Well, yes, so it evens out. Yeah. Oh, that's right. right. It's right. Oh, so, they, one, they, so they hit a four still? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they still hit on first. Oh, okay. I get it now. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this, I mean, interesting. That, this list sounds powerful. I like the symmetry of it. I like the redundancy built into it. I think it's very fucking cool and different than, like, the past. Like, it's... Mm-hmm. I like... I'm, the, uh, the, the list that got third at another... Um, I don't know if it was a major, but it was a big GT. It was a GT, so it was a two-day thing. Uh, ran the, uh, the Borkin... Okay. And it was uh, more, um, what's your name? Farsight. Uh, you mean Shadow Sun? Shadow Sun. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. The chick. Uh, she, yeah. And there was marker drones and stuff, but it was all Borkin, which I think is like neg one strength, uh, strength seven. Nah, uh, Borkin is plus four inches to all weapons. And oh, then, yeah. And then minus one. So if a enemy is targeting a battle suit, or a vehicle. Oh, it's neg one. It's negative one strength to their weapon. Nice. Uh, it looks like there was a the crisis block, cold star, Ethereos, marker drones. Uh, they they took strike teams. Completely different Tal is doing well. Completely like different, different. Yeah, Tetris for market lights. I mean, that's that's kind of good, good news though, man. Like I don't. It's looking wild. That's like, like that's. I mean, I like that. Like I think that's interesting, man. Hmm. It's cool to see the the OG shit, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm ready to see. Wild. I'm ready to see more ghost kills and stealth suits because the other crazy thing is too is if you bring stealth suits now, and you're doing your mana strike or your a uh, high orbital strike or whatever they're calling it now, um, you can essentially alpha strike using the homing beacon now with the stealth suits, so they can come down turn one. Instead of waiting for turn two. Dope. Man. Respect. And, uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing Demeki this weekend because you're playing live on Dice Check against yeah. our boy Zach, right? You're playing the new Tau? Yeah, against Death Guard. Are you bringing yeah, the stealth yeah. tech or are you going to go with something a little bit more like meta right now? Uh, I, I had I, the broadsides are so good. <laughs> I, feel, I was just I wondering. Bad. I didn't. I didn't know. Well, if you I, had the I am ghost bringing two shit. ghost kills. Uh, my idea right now is I'm bringing two ghost kills. This is something that I'm testing out uh, for dice hammer. Um, two ghost kills, two double fish, three strike teams. Uh, I think I'm going to change a strike team to a breacher team though. Um, yep. and I think then, breaching clear is such a great. Oh yeah, great combo to do because it's. It's like it's like drop pod strats. Like there's a reason that people still do really well in tournaments just with a drop pod full of devastators. Like it just works. Yep. You know, that's uh, same thing. I'm taking Dark Strider for the cause he has an aura to give plus one to wound. Uh Shadow Sun for the chapter master rerolls. An ethereal with the uh, invocation of stone and uh the invocation that gives you back CP. Um and broadsides. Two three man units of broadsides. Dope. So Some dude, the broadsides are, are so good. But I mean, like the other invocations, they're they're okay. Uh there's one that gives plus one to wound to Tal Auxiliary. So that's gonna be your crew and your best bid. Uh there's the one that I was just referring to that gives you uh CP. Get back CP. Um, and then 
there is a uh, unifying mantra where you get to re-roll morale tests and add one to combat attrition tests taken for that unit. That's essentially it. Oh, what's the um patients. what's that cool relic airburst thing that has like minus four to leadership if it touches you? Oh, I think that's a that thing's that thing's pretty cool where you can hit somebody with this out of line of sight weapon, and if is, is it hit or does wounds? It's like minus four to their leadership characteristic. And then if you kill a bunch of models, then they have to take a morale check at the number of models and an additional minus four. Well, there's a there's a stratagem that Tao has for every unit killed, it counts as two. So you pop that stratagem in every not every unit, every model in a unit killed, it counts as two models. Dang. So actually make the leadership stat matter. Yeah. yeah that's interesting. And it costs only one CP. I believe. Because I was looking at that and one. And of I'm course, and for the relic that you were talking about right now. I mean, it's it looks pretty good, man. I'm waiting to see how it shakes out because, like, you know, we got two different Tau steps doing well. You know, and so far it's shaking out well. See how they oh, go. Honest, honest to God, on paper, Tau steps the the best one. Yeah, the re rolls are, are. You get re rolls. Mm hmm. You get plus one to wound stratagem or two CP. So you combine that with Dark Strider. Now you got two ways to get plus one to wound. Um, and then what's the last thing that it gives you? Because every step gives you like two to three things. You get a three inch uh, range to all your auras. So anything your ethereal oh, wow. does is now instead of six, nine. Right. Um, and then each time a model. Uh, with a tenant intones uh, an invocation that is not an aura or uses an ability in your command phase uh, that specifies a range at three inches to the range of that invocation or ability as well. So like all your auras are increased, all your invocations are increased, and then you get a uh, reroll to hit or wound. Yeah, that's really powerful. The thing is, I like I like that. I'm excited to see you this weekend on sa uh, Saturday. What time are you guys streaming? Uh, 2 p.m. PST. You heard it here. Dice check on Twitch. Tune in. Cheer for your boy, Demeki. He's going to need it against Zach. Even though we just talked about how good Tau are. You never know what's going to happen when you play Zach. Yep. Yep. I mean, that dude, that's any army. Everybody's always like, oh, Jakari's OP. But you can't give anyone a Jakari army and they're yeah. going to win. No. Or not once. Or Custodes is OP. It's the same thing. Like, you just, there's no army in this game that's that overpowered that someone can just pick it up and say, all right, I win. Okay. It's true. Well, we got our uh, expert on Tau here. Broke down some of this incredible Tau performances over the weekend. Discussed. A crucial would you rather, which led to Demeki launching his new painting company. <laughs> Learned that Rob's fingers are, in fact, dicks. Rob, Journey. you want to take us out of here? Uh, so make sure you head on over to thelongwar.net for exclusive content and early access videos. Become a veteran of the long war today. <laughs>